Hello, BC Boom family. My name is Jerlisa Shipman, and I hope that you had an amazing weekend. And I am excited to share with you something that's going to change your whole perspective on life, especially as a young person, right? So as an educator, I believe that it is important to learn something new every day. Um, I believe that there are things around us that can teach us about ourselves, teach us about people around us. And there's just things that we just don't know about that we can always learn. And now that we have Google, and all these different resources is easy for us to get information. So the truth of the matter is we don't know everything. We need help. Um, there are things that we have not experienced yet and there are things that we can't even think about going through. And that is why we need mentors and people around us to help us be great, essentially. Um, when I graduated college, I think that was when I needed the most help because it was my first apartment, my first job, my first car, my first everything as an adult. And if it wasn't for the people that got placed in my life around me to help me through those processes, I do not think that I would have been successful in that. So Proverbs even talks about having a having multiple advisors and counselors so that our plans will succeed. And so as our ministry partners go deeper into this topic, I want you to take as many notes as possible because this is gonna be one of the topics that you are going to need for the rest of your life, okay? Especially as you grow and as you move into different seasons of your life. So stay tuned, take notes. Have you ever been in a really loud atmosphere? I love game nights. And one of the games we love to play at my house is this thing called Space Team. And basically everyone has their phones out and it's an app on our phones and each person has like a control panel that leads a spaceship to a certain destination, right? But on our phones, there's like different gadgets and buttons and knobs that you're supposed to twist and turn and, and all of these things. And everyone has different commands to say so that the spaceship goes in the certain direction. And so everyone's screaming their heads off, trying to go like, you know, click the wibble wobble or turn the knob to one, turn the knob to one. And it's just so fun. Everyone's screaming and it's a really hard game. We can only get to level eight and we've never made it to the end, but it is just gets so loud at my house whenever we play this game. But in this series, we've been talking a lot about what's true for only the young, people in your phase of life. And when it comes to being young, there's one thing that is uniquely true. There is a lot of noise. Just think about your day-to-day -day life. Maybe you like listen to your headphones with the volume all the way turned up, turn the volume up in the car and scream the songs with your friends. You get in trouble for being too loud in class. This was for sure me. You lose your voice after a football game on a Friday night. Or maybe you are not a loud person yourself, but you constantly find yourself around people that are. I'm not saying that young people are just loud. I'm saying that when we're young, noise just seems to find us. And it can be hard to figure out what or who to listen to. This is especially true when we're making decisions about literally anything. And have you ever noticed that everyone seems to have an opinion about what you should or shouldn't do? I mean, there's so much noise. At this phase of life, you're deciding what you like and don't like, who you like and don't like, how to drive, what your personal style is gonna be, what you'll do in the years after high school, what kinds of jobs you're gonna pursue, who to date, what kind of person to be. I mean, it's a lot, sorry. Could you hear me after all of that? What I was trying to say was, it's hard to make decisions about who you like, how to drive, what your personal style will be, what you'll do after high school, and what kind of person to be with that much noise in our lives, isn't it? Some friends say you should do one thing, some other friends say another. 
Then your siblings have their own advice, your parents have their own perspective, your coaches weigh in, and your teachers, and your guidance counselors, and your SAT prep tutors, and your parents' friends, and your friends' siblings. Or maybe you wish you had someone in your life who shared their opinions and perspectives with you, but instead, you have the advice of some random guy on TikTok who has a ton of money, that YouTuber with millions of subscribers, or the article you found randomly on Google. There's so much noise surrounding almost every decision you want to make. Oh, and you know this, not all of these people agree. Not all of them are right either. So with all of this noise, all of these opinions, and all of the voices speaking into your life, how do you know who or what to listen to? Paul, who we talked about throughout this series, is one of the most legendary leaders in the history of Christianity. He spent a lot of time investing in a younger guy named Timothy. They traveled and worked together until eventually, Timothy was leading on his own at the church in a city called Ephesus. So, in order to pass along some wisdom about life and leadership, Paul wrote Timothy a letter. Many people view the tone of Paul's letter like a father instructing a son. There's one part of his letter we've been focusing on specifically throughout this series. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This piece of advice was so important and continues to be talked about and focused on today. Paul wanted Timothy to understand how high the stakes were, how great his potential was, and how he could lead well during his younger years. However, this is only a part of what Paul had to say to Timothy. In fact, we have copies of two letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, and they are full of advice, wisdom, and direction for life. It wasn't just spiritual stuff either. Here's what I mean. Paul gave Timothy advice about how to fix his stomach problems, what to do when people are fighting, what it takes to be a good leader, specific names of people to avoid that are bad news, how to use the Bible, how to handle money, what kind of stuff to avoid, what kind of people to hang out with, how to impress older people, how to show respect to older and younger people. As you can see, Paul wasn't just Timothy's Bible teacher or his chaperone in life. Paul was Timothy's go-to advice guy. Even more than that, Paul was someone older who shared wisdom with Timothy that would make his life better. In fact, this kind of wisdom is what the letters of 1st and 2nd Timothy are full of. It's worth it to go back and read them for yourself. Paul didn't teach Timothy lessons just meant for his future once he was no longer young. Paul helped Timothy figure out what to do in the circumstances of his life as a young person. In other words, when Timothy wondered, how do I know what I don't know? His answer was, ask Paul. And here's the reason we're talking about this today. It's a little thing that makes a big difference, so don't miss it. It was Timothy's choice. Timothy understood that we all need the wisdom of someone older. This is true for you in high school, and this is true for me even as an adult. The thing is, you have a really unique opportunity to take advantage of right now. When you're in high school, one thing you can do that will change your whole high school experience is to pick a mentor or to pick a group of mentors. These are people who can help you in real life ways. They will walk alongside you as you navigate life in high school. They can give you great advice. They can be there for you when you don't know what to do. And please hear me. You can totally still listen to people your age. But the truth is, people who are older than you have more life experience, both highs and lows, that equip them to help you navigate real world situations. Now, before you just go find some random person that is older than you to begin giving you life advice, don't do that because that sounds like a terrible idea. It's important that we use wisdom for who we choose. I mean, is being older really the only qualification? No. Here are two filters to help you pick great mentors. First, they have to make wise decisions in their own life. I'm not talking about perfection and good luck finding that. I'm talking about a person with a pattern of making healthy choices. 
A great way to determine this is to ask yourself this question. Does this person make the kinds of decisions that lead to the kind of life that I hope to live? If the answer is yes, you're on your way to finding a great mentor. Second, they have to care enough about you to tell you the truth, even the truth that you don't want to hear. A great mentor will tell you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. They will say difficult things out of love if they believe it will help you grow for the better. Yes, sometimes it's really difficult to hear the hard truth, but it's also the way we grow. Having someone in your life who will tell you the truth, even the truth you don't wanna hear, is one of the greatest gifts you can ever receive in life. For me, I have a mentor who is, who is older and is in a different season of life, but they spoke into my life, they poured into me, they saw potential, encouraged me, but we also had to have some hard conversations about areas that I could grow in. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why I'm here today speaking to you because they saw something in me to use my voice to communicate to students. And I appreciate that so much about my mentor. So when the noise is turned up and everyone seems to have an opinion, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to decide ahead of time who you will listen to. Look, I know this isn't necessarily a common way to live in high school. It's not like everyone in your school is constantly talking about finding great mentors, but here's why this is so important. Wisdom or knowing what to do when you face life circumstances comes from experience. So when you're in high school, you can choose to learn from people that have 15 years of wisdom or 30 years or 40 years or 60 years. The choice is yours. But one of the best choices I believe you can make is to pick a mentor. Like Timothy, you can have more wisdom than what's common. You can make better decisions because you have the experience and wisdom of someone older than you in addition to your own. Just imagine the impact this could have on your life. Imagine if you can make great decisions right now, better decisions than I made, and the kind of decisions that will shape your life for the better forever. And the key is as simple as acknowledging that we all need the wisdom of someone older. You can choose to live as though this is true and find a mentor. When you do, God might just use their wisdom to help your years of being young become even better. Being young is amazing. You don't wanna miss it or to just try to fast forward through it. We want you to get the most out of this time in your life because one day you won't be young. So don't forget what this feels like because there are some things in life for only the young. When you head to groups, think about your response to this question. What impact could a mentor's wisdom have on your life? Welcome back. I hope you took a lot of notes and you gained a different perspective on why it is so important to have as many counselors and guiders and people around you to lead you through, throughout the different seasons of your life. One thing that I wanna add is that the Holy Spirit is the perfect counselor. In James, it talks about asking for his wisdom because he gives it freely and generously. And so I encourage you to also listen to the voice or learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit while you are making crucial decisions for your life. Also, um, mentors and advisors are going to be the people that help lead you into your purpose. So I encourage you to choose wisely. And even the ones that you may resist, I also want you to be open to what God may present to you. I know that sometimes we want the people around us to look a certain way or act a certain way, but some of our greatest blessings are through people that we did not expect. So I want you to take notes of that and be open to the people that God may send in your life. That's all I have. I hope you have a great week and continue to pray about who should be leading you.